All right, guys, for, so for those of you who didn't catch my name before, I'm Guru Jerome Teague of the Applied Extremist of Egypt system. Our system is a system of polenta walk, and that's a little bit different from some of the arts you saw earlier, mainly because our primary emphasis is on the single stick. Uh, we utilize the stick primarily as a training tool. Uh, defending against this weapon when it's traveling at high rates of speed is very good for developing your reflexes. Uh, some of the material I'm going to show you guys today is going to incorporate some of our techniques, but first I want to get you guys kind of flowing into uh, what we call a defend and counter uh, drill. Okay, so I'm going to bring Andre out. So, um, essentially defend and counter, pretty simple. I'm going to strike my partner, and he's going to fire back with a return strike. Okay, so we start slowly at first. Okay, single strikes. Then multiple strikes, get some thrusts, okay, and I'm moving, use the butt of my weapon, and then gradually we can just increase the speed and add different steps. And it's his job just to follow along and try not to get hit. So, there it is. Go. We have an hour. Just get there. All right, guys, so what you just saw is kind of a little more advanced version of what I'm going to try to get you guys doing today. Uh, we're going to start kind of slow, a little bit basic, uh, with some solo exercises to teach you guys the proper mechanics of how to do the defend and counter. First one we're going to start with is our basic stance and basic blocking. Um, our system, we hold the stick about two fingers from the bottom. Some guys, I've seen some of you here today, gripping high with lots of punyu. Some systems use about a fist length, okay? We prefer the two fingers. This allows us still the ability to hook, to strike, but it kind of limits the opponent's options for disarming, and we're actually gonna use a disarm in a little while that's gonna make use of that punyu. Okay, so two fingers from the bottom. When we stand, we always wanna have our elbows tucked in, nice and tight, very similar to uh, Groove Eco stance that he showed. Uh, we like to keep our body side profile. We don't want to be straight ahead on our opponent, because Balithawak is a very close quarters system. Uh, our training range that we begin in is the middle range, but we like to get it really tight, really close, fighting into close quarters. Uh, just to recap on that idea of range, okay, long range, we can hit each other's hands, but we cannot hit each other's vital parts, the torso, the head, okay? Middle range, we are able to strike the head, the torso, but we're out of range of our opponent's left hand. And then for us, compressing it even further, close range is when we have access to using the left hand. Gouge the eye, punch, pull the hair, any number of things, okay? Uh, so that's our range. Uh, stance, back to that. Elbows tucked, okay? Again, we're going to be side profile. We want our rear leg up in the back, heel off the ground, presenting our opponent with a very small, narrow target, okay? Because when we get into those close quarters, this broad target gives them a lot of opportunity to strike us. Uh, our blocking in the system is very, very easy. Simply keep the stick on your center, and you're going to rotate to the side, placing that weapon in the pathway of your opponent's weapon, and using your left hand to support that block. Okay, so this is how we would block the number one strike. Now the number two strike is coming in, we rotate, pick it up here. Now 
Number three, if you bend down, pick it up here. Number four, rotate, pick it up here. Number five, we just brush the stick across the center. Number six, here. Number seven, here. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice how every single time I make my block, my stick is always vertical. We do utilize some different blocking methods, but our most basic and our go-to is to keep the stick vertical because it cuts out that superfluous motion of having to twirl and set a position before we can defend. We always want to go direct to the, to the, the defense. Again, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. Okay, everybody go ahead and try it. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you our angles of attack that we're going to be operating with for the simple defendant counter. Okay? Uh, our one and two, unlike most systems, we don't throw the diagonal. Okay? We do have these strikes, but we don't put these as our one and two. Instead, we use a horizontal strike as our one and our two. Main reason, it's an angle we would like to use for training because it's easier to see some of the positions for entry, for disarms, and locking and stick manipulations. Okay? So this is our one, our two, our three, our four, our five, our six, and our seven. Okay? Again, one is to the head, two is to the head, three is to the body, four is to the body. Our center line for us, our number five, is going to the pubic bone about two inches below the navel. Six is to the opponent's eye on the back hand, and seven is to the opponent's eye. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, everybody try it. All right, guys, the next one, uh, continuing on with that basic blocking. Now we're going to fire back a counter strike after each defense. Okay? So going back to the blocking exercise that we just performed, we block a one, and now we're going to return a backhand strike to our opponent's head. We block a two, now we return a forehand strike to our opponent's head. A three, return backhand to the opponent's head. Four, return forehand to the opponent's head. Five, return the backhand to the opponent's head, six, return the forehand to the opponent's head, and seven, return the backhand to the opponent's head. Again, one, strike, two, strike, three, strike, four, strike, five, strike, six, strike, and seven, strike. Okay? Everybody try that. All right, guys, got one more exercise for you guys to perform solo before we move on to the uh, partner defendant counter. Okay, this one we're going to go back to our seven angles of attack, but this time we're not going to throw them all the way through. We're going to do what we call a half strike or a stopping strike. The reason for this, if I borrow Andrea real fast, is when you're drilling at high rates of speed in close quarters, uh, number one, it's very, very difficult. I could end up overwhelming my partner and he might miss a block. Okay, and what would happen if he missed a block, right? He gets whacked, and we don't want that because that's how people get injured, and that's how people can't train anymore, and we always want to be able to train. Okay, so the reason for the half strike should be a tree fall. Okay, the reason for the half strike is, so no matter where I go, okay, my strike is not going to follow through. Okay, this keeps him safe. So now if I tell him I want him to defend, and I end up going too fast for him, what ends up happening, he defends, he defends, he defends, he defends, he defends. Oh, that one got him. Okay? But it didn't get him. It stopped. So now we can pause the training. He can bend down, pick that up, and now we can continue our training. Okay? Oh, almost got him. Okay? But it stopped. So he's not in any threat. All right? Thank you. So 
Uh, what we're going to do with this, and this is actually going to be the feeding part, the feeders part to our defend and counter drill. We're going to fire our strikes halfway and we're going to turn back to the center line or the defense position. Okay? And that just looks like this. I strike a one, I return to defense. And what, what I want you guys to focus on is retracting the elbow. Just pretend like your elbow is made of metal and your ribs are a magnet and that just goes whoop. Okay? Very similar to the way a boxer withdraws a punch. A boxer doesn't go like this, punch, and just let that arm drift and then bring it back. The boxer punches and withdraws the elbow. So this is no different than that. So again, one, withdraw the elbow back to center. Two, withdraw the elbow back to center. Three, withdraw the elbow back to center. Four, elbow back to center. Five, elbow back to center. Six, elbow back to center. Seven, elbow back to center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay? You guys go ahead and try that. first. Everybody say that. The feeder is the person who is striking first. That's going to be important so we can keep track of what the hell is going on here in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay? So in this, in this instance, I'm going to be A. I will be the feeder. I'm the one who is striking first. Andrea's job is going to be to defend and counter strike. However, he is going to do the half strike because I am not going to block Andrea. I'm not going to block. Okay? That's why that's so important. Because a lot of times when you're drilling at high rates of speed, the senior man might be faster than the person they're drilling with. So if you don't have that stopping strike, there's a lot of injuries. And injuries take you out of training. And that kind of sucks, because we all love to train. All right? So, starting out with just that basic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feed. Andrea is going to defend and he's going to counter strike to my head, stopping the strike. So when I strike one, he counter strikes here. I strike two, he counter strikes here. Three, he counter strikes here to the head. Four, he counter strikes here to the head. Five, he counter strikes here to the head. Six, he counter strikes here to the head. And seven, he counter strikes to the head. One more time. Notice how my thrusts are going to the side. Here and here. That's important. Okay? <laughs> Everybody go ahead and try that. We're going to go for about five minutes, and then we'll switch. B will be the feeder. I will let you know when to switch. Okay? Go ahead. How's everybody feel about that? Pretty good? Pretty easy? Easy enough? Alright, now we're going to add an element to this. Back, we're going to go back to A being the feeder. So now the feeder is going to defend the receiver's counterattack. Here's where it's going to start to get confusing why it's important you keep track of A and B if you're supposed to be feeder. Okay? So, I give him the strike. He moves the stick and he was firing back. That's the exercise we just did. Now I need to block this. Okay? So this is where we're going to use that exercise we did, the half strike to defense. Okay? Once my weapon is met with an obstruction, it can't do anything else in there. Okay? I mean, there are options. I could flip and I could keep delivering multiple strikes, but we're not going to do that for the purposes of simplicity for this drill. Okay? So from here, my job is to get that back to defend against that incoming strike. 
Okay? But you add an element to your blocking here. Now, when you return your stick back to center line position, you can support here or you can touch the hand. Okay? By touching the hand here, you're going to stunt that power that he's coming back. Okay? So that looks like this. Here, here. Okay? I'm just jamming into the hand with my left. Okay? So we're going to go through all seven angles of attack like that. So I go here. Here, here, here. Okay, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Everybody give that a go. A is feeding and defending B's counterattack. One. All right, so now we're going to look at what happens when the opponent will actually completely and totally hold our stick. Okay, a moment ago, again on A, I'm feeding. So a moment ago, I'd strike, he would defend, he would tap my weapon out of the way, which would still give me the opportunity to recover and defend this strike. Now, if I strike and he holds my weapon, I can't have this back. So now I have to default to using my left hand. Okay? Two options here. You can use your palm or you can use your form. Doesn't matter. Um, some of you guys, some of the more novices, you guys might prefer to use your forearm. Uh, there's benefits to both. Forearm's a stronger structure. There's less risk of, dam uh, of damaging your fingers. Okay? The benefit of the palm is it opens you up for the possibility of doing different techniques. Both are good, and we can use techniques against any one. We're going to go into that here in a minute, but we need to get, go ahead and drill this, that this defense with your left hand is reflexive. So now, I strike, he holds my weapon, and he fires back a butt strike. Okay? So if I'm here, he's going to fire back the butt strike. And again, he's stopping his strike. He's going to allow me to pick this up, palm or form, whichever I prefer. On this side, strike here, grabs the stick here, strikes here, I can go palm, Four and so on. Three, four, five, back up. six, seven. Okay. On these thrusts, when you really send these thrusts through, this is really, really useful because chances are if you throw one of these thrusts and he defends it, you're probably not going to get your weapon back to defend this way. So you will have to default to the left hand on the thrust. Go ahead and uh, I'm going to throw a really good five. I just want you to fire that, that, that button strike. So logical. Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't have to hold the stick. You just fire back. The butt strike. But if I really jam this thrust through, and he fires that butt strike back, there's no way I'm getting my stick back on that line. Okay. And same thing here. If I fire this thrust through on this number six, there's no way I'm going to get that stick back. Same here. Okay. So one more time, all the way through. start with that, and then I'm going to call you guys to mix up the feed. Okay? So A is feeding, 
You're going to go one through seven. And then when I call you guys to, you go ahead and mix up the feed. And then we'll go, for that with the, uh, we'll go with that for a few minutes. And I'll call you guys to switch and feed will be the feed. Okay? Give it a go.